falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Makadi and welcome to Harare. So we are in one of the beautiful neighborhoods here in Harare and I'm meeting one of the most inspiring entrepreneurs to inspire you, to inspire us. Hello, Bright. Hi, how are you, Tigers? Makadi. No, Tiripo, <laughs> Makadi. <laughs> no, nice meeting you, Brian. Bright, Bright. <laughs> Gosh. I will keep correcting you I until keep you get it. You. <laughs> you okay, know? nice meeting you, Bright. Right, nice meeting yes. you, Bright. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself. You can introduce yourself to our audience. All right. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Bright, Bright Makuchete. Yes, I'm an aspiring entrepreneur based in Belvedere, Harare, Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm sitting here with African Tigress. Very, very excited to be with you right now uh what can i tell you about <laughs> myself <laughs> I, i'm so interested i would love to know your story all right hmm where do i start um actually my story starts with the rabbit tree all right so okay. we start at the rabbit tree <laughs> we should go to the rabbit tree all yeah. right great okay let's go there great <laughs> wonderful can I put on my army fatigue now? Yeah, army fatigue. <laughs> you don't want us to see you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you I'll take it off when we are All, right. All right. Yeah. Cool. How's Harare? How's business so far at this time? Mm, it's not bad. Uh -huh. you know, we must always be thankful for what we have. Yeah. Um, generally, as an economy, you know, we've experienced a lot of, um, you know, um, problems. Yeah. If you can put it that way, but. Yeah. If you have got an entrepreneurial mind, you mm -hmm. can always find your way. And I guess I've been lucky enough to find my way, mm -hmm. even in, in the harsh economy that we faced for the past few years. Mm, great. Mm. Yeah, so is this the rabbit tree? It's all about ideas. No, the rabbit tree is on the other side. So yeah. let's go around this way. All okay. right. This is actually an extension of the eating area. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. That we oh, are with that shade, up. so, yes, such so that, that in case it rains, people can actually sit in here. Absolutely. Oh, and, great. And uh, we're going to have nice lounges in there. And, you know, I'll tell you the idea later. But uh -huh. for now, this is where my story begins. Mm -hmm. In the rabbit tree. All right. So... If you can join me, please, ladies first. All right. Mm. Wow. So, tri Tigress, mm -hmm. this is how my story began. Mm -hmm. You know, I was working in corporate Zimbabwe for a long time. Yeah. Um, and I did what I did there, managed to achieve what I achieved there. Yeah. But some time back in, 20, in 2001, I decided that, you know what? corporate life was not for me. Mm -hmm. I was more hands-on. I wanted to do something for myself. So I ventured out and started doing, uh, funny enough, I was in the motor trade for a while. Oh, business. selling vehicles. I was actually a services and maintenance center. Mm. It did very well for 10 years. Then in 2012, uh, when things were going south for this economy, uh, it didn't make sense anymore for me to be in that industry. Mm -hmm. So... I kind of went into the wilderness for a few years and I didn't know what to do. I tried this, I tried that, I tried this and that. And then eventually I sat back and said, you know what? The government is talking a lot about farming. Government is promoting people to do farming. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided to listen and I started to do farming at that time. So my first business actually in the farming industry was raising chickens. Mm -hmm. Around 2012, 2015, everyone was raising chickens in the country. So for me, I thought that's an easy kill because I've been corporate. I know how to do business. So I decided to do chickens, but not just a chicken project per mm -hmm. se. I decided to do it as a business. That's when I formed my business called the White Meat Company. And my idea was to sell white meat to the people because white meat was becoming very popular worldwide for many mm -hmm. reasons um, notably health reasons and I wanted to run a health narrative along you know good eating good living and then living healthy kind of thing so I say to myself I'll do chickens and I'll do white meat so when I started doing chickens it was good for a minute it was good for a while and then we got kind of got um, uh, I don't know what you call it but I felt that there was market saturation in that business. Oh, mm -hmm. Also, I very quickly noticed that there are big players in that industry, the, the, the poultry industry, especially the chicken rearing. 
very big players, I won't mention them by name, but they controlled the value chain. From, that is from rearing to... From the egg to the chick to the feed and then to the market they compete with you when mm -hmm. you've produced your chickens. So to me, I felt that I needed something that mm -hmm. could... Uh, that I could actually control the value chain. Mm -hmm. Some way I would have at least a minimal, you know, control of the value chain from my production to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came up with uh, rabbit um, production, which was also a natural complement to my white meat company. Company, yeah, sure. You understand? Yeah. So this is the outcome of the idea. Hmm. This okay? is great. This is my rabbit tree. And... Um, to start this, I actually sold. You, you said some people want to be inspired. Yeah. I didn't borrow money, I didn't look for funding, but what I did is I looked around me and saw what I had at my disposal. I sold a motor vehicle. I remember at that time I caught 8,000 for it. Mm -hmm. And I took that $8,000, I built these sheds that you see here, mm -hmm. and I also bought these cages that you see, mm -hmm. and the initial breeding stock of the rabbit. Now, talking about the rabbits, I focused on the New Zealand white. Which is the, which one which is, is the New Zealand white? This one here, if you can take a picture oh. of this guy. Yeah, oh, this is... You see, this is New Zealand white, or uh -huh. that guy who's dancing It's so cute. <laughs> yeah, you see, you see? Yeah. So, I then decided to focus on the New Zealand white. Obviously, after some study, you know, mm -hmm. the University of YouTube, I went on YouTube. Oh actually wanted to ask you where did you learn the knowledge so actually you can learn a lot of things you can actually learn on youtube 100 percent. 100 percent. so you went on youtube absolutely. researched absolutely i went on youtube i researched i spoke to people joined a few rabbit groups uh -huh. all right and started getting as much information and knowledge as i could in the mm -hmm. first in the shortest time possible and whilst i was doing that i'd already set my mind on doing the rabbit so i'd already sold my car bought mm -hmm. this equipment and bought the breeding stock but so how many years have you been doing it now this is now my third year your third year my third year and, and it's been a very interesting uh, success story for me because once i started doing the rabbitry um and then decided to go pure white you can see there's two remnants of uh, some chinchillas there oh the ones are called so chinchillas the gray ones yes you have your chinchilla coat they oh. are made from that rabbit oh yeah, oh, okay. yeah. You know mink, the animal mink is now a protected species. Mm -hmm. You cannot hunt mink. They used to have those mink coats, those expensive ones, because that is now been um, uh, outlawed. You can't, you can't hunt mink anymore. Uh -huh. The natural replacement was the rabbit. Okay. So they now make chinchilla coats mm -hmm. and um, clothing out of these things. So I then decided to go pure white for many reasons. One, they have got a high disease resistance compared to the other breeds that are available locally. Mm -hmm. Two, they've got a low mortality rate of mm -hmm. the infants and they've got a higher production rate or productivity rate, you know, and um, um, also they are not prone to disease as much as the other species. So I naturally decided to do this. And also talking about chinchilla cots, um, I thought down the line somewhere we can also start producing uh, fair coats for the clothing industry as a byproduct of our business here. Mm. But so far we do meat, we do manure, mm -hmm. you know, we do urine, urine yeah. which is used as an organic fat or an insecticide. Fertilizer, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So this is the kind of th an idea of the income streams that we are enjoying from the, from the, from the rabbit tree. Mm. So, I, I guess the next thing you're going to ask me is, how did we end up with the food place? How did you end Yeah, because I knew you through the food place, the white meat company, the food place. So, how the did you end up? Hall, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I love to share my story because when it started, the idea of running a restaurant was not part of it. Mm -hmm. The idea was to capitalize on the meat production, obviously the fares coming from the rabbits and the fertilizers coming from the rabbits, because this is what I had started on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But uh, over time, I then realized that rabbit meat market was a problem in the country. Mm -hmm. Because I had so many people talking to me and asking me, where are you going to sell? Where are you going to get the market? And then also in those groups where I was present, uh, I then realized that 
rabbit meat market was a problem for local rabbit farmers. So I then sat down and started thinking and cracking my head, how am I going to solve this? I decided to create my own market. So I looked around and I saw that there was no place in Arare that was selling rabbit meat as, a, as, as an off head or had rabbit meat on their offerings. Mm -hmm. I also remembered that years back we had a place that we used to call Adelaide that used to do rabbit meat and people would flock there for rabbit meat. So I mm -hmm. say to myself, why do I not resuscitate that idea? Mm. Create a space where people can come and enjoy not only rabbit but white meat and run it along the healthy eating for healthy living narrative mm -hmm. that I've been so, thinking of. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's great. So thinking about your revenue and business, which one is more rewarding? Is it the restaurant parts or is it the rabbit? Do you sell okay, do you sell the rabbit or do you cook all the rabbits that you prepare? And do you like uh, is it the manure? Like which which one is the most rewarding? Is it the rabbit or the restaurant? Oh almost sounds like a trick question because I have been asking myself the same question, but quite frankly, the restaurant now has emerged oh. as the cornerstone of the business. Mm -hmm. Although I like to maintain the rabbit tree as the foundation, the foundation of the vision. Yeah. This is the backbone of the business. Mm -hmm. Everything is stemming out of this. So I have plans to actually expand this tenfold over time. Mm. However, to answer you uh, directly, the restaurant has been a cash cow oh. because I did not, I underestimated how much people were going to love the idea of white meat. So uh -huh. they've been coming here in increased numbers such that I've had to outsource rabbits. So now I've created myself a network of rabbit farmers like oh, myself wow. who supply to me. Mm. Not only that, I've now ventured into making rabbit cages and then inviting people to go into this business. Mm. So I will supply a rabbit cage to them, supply the breeding stock to them, and then buy back whatever they produce and oh. cook it in the restaurant. I see it. Yeah. The chain. <laughs> the chain. <laughs> the value chain. <laughs> You're trying to also like get the whole chain from production to... Which that's is really right. great yes, because, yes. yeah, because, mm. you know, that's how you get to scale and expand in some businesses what would you tell someone who is interested in getting into rabbit farming and are you also available in case someone re wants to reach out to you for advice in, on in terms of rabbit farming yes absolutely i'm available and i've actually been putting myself out there speaking to people especially customers that come here they always get excited seeing the rabbits so we show them and then a, a sizable number of them have said we want to get into this project it to them it looks easy and actually it is easier than some projects that i have i've been involved in so yes i would say to people try it get into mm -hmm. rabbit farming Mm -hmm. It is not as difficult as it looks or mm -hmm. it, as you might have heard, but we are available to train you, to teach you, to guide you, to even provide the breeding stock that you need, as well as the housing for the rabbits. We can, you know, contact us. Um, I'm sure we'll uh, I'll give you our contact details and then you can talk to us and we'll help you along. Let's have a chat. So is farming rewarding? Because, you know, a lot of young people feel like, oh, dirty <laughs> job. Like, lots of people would want to be in the corporate world. And then now you're coming from the corporate world, getting into farming. Because, you know, in Africa, most places people consider farming as a poor people thing and all that. So, is farming rewarding? I would say 100% it is. For me, in my personal journey, um, I, like I said earlier, I was in the motor trade before. Mm -hmm. And now, I'm doing farming. And for me, I feel satisfied because I'm doing something that I love, something that I can actually see, something that I have a control over. Um, unlike when I was doing cars, I had passion for it back then. But mm -hmm. now if I had to choose between farming mm -hmm. and uh, cars, I would prefer to do farming. 
All right, all right. So thank you so much, Brian. We appreciate you. Bright. <laughs> bright. Why do I think your name is? Because bright is not a very common name. Maybe it's, is it common? Yeah, well, not really, no. And, and, and just to make you feel better, it's everybody's mistake. Everyone uh, calls you Brian. <laughs> but uh, I always say, look up in the sky. You see how so bright, bright it is? Yeah, then you know my name. <laughs> all right. So thank right. you so much, Bright. I yes. appreciate appreciate thank you for sharing your story mm. and i hope your story inspires a lot more people i'm definitely gonna leave a link to his how you can get him beat the restaurant beat the rabbits i'll definitely leave a link to that in the description mm. and yeah until next time i wanna say goodbye in your language bye bye no bye bye is not <laughs> no 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 that's yeah. slang it's a it's a bastardization of the word bye bye no what yeah. what's the the right way of saying it mm, yeah, until yes. next time Sarah is a kanaka <laughs> yeah all right thank you all right. Chicken feet. Yeah. Oh, chicken feet. Yeah. Oh, I have to try this. Starter. So the starter is chicken feet. I remember people telling me that I must try this in Zimbabwe. Yeah, share there. Chicken right. feet. Um, I'm happy to try chicken feet for the first time in my life. <laughs> and I don't know why I'm so weird. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> These are you did for the culture. Gizzards. Yeah, chicken feet mixed yeah. with gizzards. So we have. We just finished the legs. Fish. <laughs> Maclax. Oh, fish for <laughs> So we're gonna have fish and rabbit. Rabbit. And Saza. And Ugali. Chomolia. Yeah. It's called Chomolia or Chomolia. It's just uh It's Kovo. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank just a sauce on the side for those who like a bit of gravy. Alright. I'll come and train you guys just now. Mm. All right, thank you. All right. Asante. Enjoy. Bon appetit. Thank Merci. You.